Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a review of the NVIDIA Shield. Now the Shield is an interesting mix of a game console and a way for NVIDIA to show off Tegra 4. But the question is, is it for you? Take one look at the Shield and you'll realize it's big. Really big. The best way to describe it is to throw a folding screen onto an Xbox 360 controller and call it a day, and that's not really a bad thing. It has nearly all the same buttons as the Xbox controller, and because of that it feels rock solid when gaming. My only minor complaint is that the home and back buttons are a little too easy to accidentally bump while gaming, but everything else from the triggers to the thumbsticks feel console quality. That's good, because the trade-off is that it's really too big to be pocketable easily, and Nvidia even sells a carrying case for it so you can toss it in a bag. It's not something I'd really worry about though. The shield is well built and feels like it could take some abuse. Even though it's basically all plastic, it's sturdy, with no creaking or flex anywhere, and it does have a definite heft to it. That's mostly to do with the big battery inside, which makes it a bit heavier than I'd like, but it really wasn't a big deal. The hinge for the screen is also solid, which as I'll get into in a minute, is more important than you might think. There are lots of nice little touches around the device, including an LED to show when it's charging, the shield logo on the power adapter and USB cable, and the interchangeable shields, or tags as Nvidia calls them. It comes with a silver one, which attaches neatly with magnets, however you can customize your shield with other tags. It's a nice little touch, but too bad they cost 20 bucks each. Something I didn't realize until I got it is that there's a fan to keep the Tegra 4 cool along with a pair of vents. You can't hear it normally unless you're in a very quiet room, and it does do a good job of keeping the shield cool. It also comes with stereo speakers, which are a lot better than most phones and tablets, and do a great job when gaming, listening to music, or watching video. Rounding out the hardware, you'll find mini HDMI, which will even work over 4K, micro USB for charging, a headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot. Unfortunately, the Shield only comes with 16GB of internal storage, and you can't use the micro SD card to store games just yet, although it should be coming soon. The screen comes in at 5 inches with a 1280 by 720 resolution, and it's pretty good. 1080p would just be a strain for gaming, and the panel gets nice and bright with good color and contrast, however considering the size of the Shield, I feel like they could have made it a bit bigger. There's no camera at all, which really isn't a problem for me, but you will find a microphone for using apps like Google Now. The main reason the Shield exists, I feel, is for Nvidia to demo what Tegra 4 is capable of. And it is definitely capable. Inside, we're looking at a quad-core Cortex-A15 setup clocked at 1.9GHz, with a 5th low power core, 72-core GPU, and 2GB of RAM. In normal use, it absolutely screams. I've never seen Android run this smoothly before, which is awesome to see. The benchmarks back this up. It easily clears the fastest phones and tablets I've ever tested, which is exactly what I want to see in a gaming device. There are three main ways to game on the Shield. The first are native Android games, and while the selection is hardly anything amazing, there are definitely some good games in here. Shadowgun is a good example of a game that's made to take advantage of Tegra 4, as well as use the physical controls, and with Google Play games, real-time multiplayer is actually pretty seamless and fun for games like Riptide GP. The only problem is that a lot of games are made to work for a touchscreen only, and it gets awkward holding the shield by the screen, although it is definitely nice that the hinge can hold the weight of the handheld. Where it gets more tricky is with games like Temple Run, which have to be used in Portrait, which is nearly unplayable. Since it runs basically stock Android 4.2, you can also use any other Android app you like, which is a huge plus over something like a 3DS or Vita, however a lot of things are a bit weird to use in landscape. The second way to play games with the shield is with emulators. Put simply, this is the killer app for me, as we've got plenty of power to emulate everything from the NES to the Nintendo DS on here. I can never really get behind playing old console games with virtual keys on phones and tablets, but the Shield has all the buttons you need for playing even PS1 and N64 games. The huge catalog of awesome older titles you can play is basically enough to keep me busy with the Shield. Lastly, you can stream PC games. This requires you to have a gaming PC with an NVIDIA GTX 650 or better, which limits you to only be using a new NVIDIA card, but if you've got one, it's a pretty sweet deal. Not all games will work, but it's a surprisingly seamless experience. Dishonored ran smoothly with only the occasional hiccup and practically no lag which was awesome. The Shield streams everything over Wi-Fi, so you'll want to make sure you have a decent dual band router, as well as stay within 10 to 20 feet of it to keep a good signal. The quality is really impressive though, and setup is almost entirely automatic. The only problem I had was with Metro Last Light, which while a supported game, ran at a poor frame rate even at 720p. 
With the power-hungry CPU cores and a fan to run, battery life was really impressive. Thanks to that huge 7350mAh battery, I was able to get 5-6 to six hours of mixed Android and emulator use, and slightly more when streaming PC games. The Shield is an interesting device. It's by far one of the best ways to play games on Android, especially if they are able to use the physical controls. Being able to stream games from the PC is a nice feature. It's well built, has good battery life, and it is absolutely screaming fast. Unfortunately, it's going to run you a steep $300, and because of the design of the Shield, if a game isn't made to take advantage of physical controls, it's going to get awkward to hold. And if you don't have a new Nvidia card in your PC, the game streaming is going to be a no-go. It might not be perfect, and the cheaper Nexus 7 is probably a better choice for a lot of people, but if you're looking for a badass little game console, the Shield is absolutely worth a look. However, what do you guys think? Would you go for the Shield, or would you prefer something like the 3DS or Vita? Definitely be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. I also want to thank the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I've been using Squarespace to build my own site, and they really do make it super simple for you to build your own website in no time. There are lots of great looking templates to choose from, so you don't need to know code or anything like that, and your site will even automatically resize for everything from phones to tablets to desktops. And if you need a little help, they do have 24-7 customer support based out of New York City. It all starts at just $8 a month, however for a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use offer code AUSTIN8. That's squarespace.com and offer code AUSTIN8. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're always kept up to date with my latest videos. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.